the Department of Repairing. The doctor looked out of the window of her new office and thought of her previous fieldwork, repairing transmitters in outlying areas where it was difficult to get a signal. She had been surprised by her move through the departments, from a peripheral identifier to a middle-ranking analyst to an inner translator and finally achieving a coveted central position of senior connector. But then she had worked hard at amplifying her skills, tuning her ability to pick up a wide band of resonance, enhancing her sensitivity to the faintest vibration. Her nickname in the field had been Queen of Wi-Fi. These days, of course, one didn't build one's career in a narrow, progressive way. Gone with the chains of qualifications, the graduation from a lower level to a higher one that was deemed more advanced, leading to a focused specialism, until sitting at the top of a leafless tree of knowledge was a lone research professor writing in isolation. Their dislocation from society ensured by an elite faculty. No, that was too linear and old school. She thought back over the last 10 years. There had been con considerable confusion and disorientation. The shift from hierarchy to aerial view, from pyramids to pancakes, one of the many phrases that had sought to clarify the difficult gear change everyone had been through. Perhaps more a slipping of gears altogether, she thought. The final collapse of Enlightenment conceptual structures had happened in the shadows of the manufacturing disintegration during the mid-2020s. The irony had escaped no one that that was the era that should have had perfect vision, if you measured everything numerically, of course. She liked to refer to her ability in this new age of pairing as a continuation of the old skill of matrimonial matchmaking. Now, only it was between human, transhuman, bio-object, and the few remaining object objects. There was precious little pure bio left. She glanced out of the side window towards her old lab and considered yet again how far pairing had come. Sensing Mary come into the room, she turned to smile. They had had a difficult day yesterday. The incident at the Milan Design Fair had been troubling and had caused some tensions between them. It was important to regroup. These are old, broken, thonnet chairs. They're rubbish, Mary said. The doctor jumped and mentally fast-forwarded through the usual pleasantries. Surely we don't have to repair everything, Mary continued. But our department, the doctor started. In the whole world, Mary finished, rolling her eyes. The doctor closed hers and tried to reconsider the intern's outburst, searching for a moment searching for a comment that was not going to make the situation worse. Somewhere in Nairobi, a request for chairs pinged up on a screen. She tried to ignore it. This was not about actual chairs, and they were not what needed repairing at this moment. She gathered her thoughts carefully. Is it the style? Is it the dark bent wood? No, I'm just tired of trying to rescue every bit of rubbish from the selfie age, pretending it has a use. Can't we just burn the chairs? That could at least cook food somewhere. The doctor hid her shock at the use of the banned word rubbish and let it slide. To focus on the agitated state of Mary, what had caused this throwback behaviour? Was Mary not up to the job? Ai Weiwei used chairs in his work. They don't have to be functional, she offered. 
He was a classic selfie, using mass production to talk about the dangers of mass production to further his career. Well, I'm glad you haven't lost your critical faculties, the doctor countered. Mary frowned at the worn tabletop instead of meeting the doctor's eye. She was battling with the urge to shout, how long will this have to go on? But knew she had already, already overstepped with the word rubbish. And this internship was a precious opportunity. Only the select few had jobs now. The doctor watched her grit her teeth, struggling. Her heart went out to this girl, wrestling with confusion and a toxic inheritance. She stopped mentally rewriting Mary's reference. There was silence. They both shifted weight from one leg to the other, looked up and smiled, recognizing the strange synchronicity of their physical movement. For a split second, Mary thought about sex with the doctor, but hastily buried this for fear the doctor would notice. That would be too, too awful, and not something she was anywhere near ready to contemplate. In fact, she'd shocked herself with the thought. The doctor looked up from the marked, repurposed floorboards on the top of the table and considered how ingrained patterns of behavior also seem so strong in Mary. The hot, rebellious instinct that flew in the face of survival, aware of what it was doing, but just unable to stop. This destructive streak had been humanity's cultural flaw, a San Andreas fault running through the 21st century. It had finally ruptured, and they were in the department dealing with the fallout. They were repairing. The doctor felt a deep sadness, the same feeling she'd had when she learned about the pile of 50 abandoned chairs at the back of the design exhibition center. A strange physical hurt at this lack of care. But that, she thought, was why she was passionate about this job. She refocused and smiled at Mary. For the second time that morning, Mary surprised herself. I'll go and arrange for the UN drones to collect the chairs and drop them in Melendi. The Kayambu women's group can pick them up from there when they're fixed. Thank you, Mary. The doctor suddenly felt relieved and strangely optimistic as the door closed behind the exiting intern. The doctor shook her head wondering about the tensions of the morning. She moved over to her chair by the screens and noticing that the message light had stopped flashing in Nairobi, plugged herself in to recharge. 